Hey Gifted Crafters, welcome back to my channel. I wanna share 10 tips on how to maintain your iron and get the maximum value of your iron for your crafting needs. So here we go. In a prior video, I showed you how to clean your iron. So now let's focus on how to maintain your iron and keep it functional for a long time. Tip number one. I think what's critical for you to understand is about the different types of water, especially when you're steaming. So everyone has tap water. That's the water that comes out of your faucet. Now, depending where you live, some areas may have a higher mineral content in their water, and that's what's called hard water. Then there is distilled water, and distilled water is a type of purified water. And that just means that they've removed the salt, minerals, and other impurities from the water. Now, if you're not sure what type of water you have, you can get your water tested, or you can ask your local water provider. Tip number two. Most iron manufacturers recommend that you use regular tap water for your iron. But if you live in an area that has hard water, you should use a 50-50 blend of hard water and distilled water on your iron. But one thing to note is that you should never use 100% distilled water on your iron. Distilled water can actually be harmful to your iron. So if you're using 100% distilled water, you're actually promoting the corrosion that can happen in your iron more than tap water. And here's why. Distilled water is depleted of minerals. So it'll actually remove the minerals that are inside the metal of the iron. This will cause the metals in your iron to weaken and could lead to leakage. This is why plain tap water is recommended. So check with your manufacturer's specific recommendations. Tip number three. So distilled water has a different boiling characteristics as opposed to tap water. So if you're doing a cold refill on your iron and you have a hot sole plate, when you put that water in, it's going to result in some spitting and you don't want that. Tip number four, emptying out the water tank in your iron. You definitely don't want to leave the water inside your iron. So good practice is that after each ironing session, you empty out the tank. Because if you don't, you're going to develop algae and other impurities in your iron. So after each session, make sure you empty out that water tank to avoid algae and rust from occurring. Tip number five, so once you turn your iron on, make sure that you set it to the right temperature setting. Now, if you're doing multiple fabrics, make sure that you look at your fabrics and identify the type of fabric. For example, I'm doing two different types of fabrics. If I'm ironing a polyester fabric and a cotton fabric, they are two different settings. So the polyester fabric will require 300 degrees Fahrenheit, where the cotton fabric will require 400 degrees so I will start with the polyester and work my way up to the cotton fabric settings of 400 degrees. Now, if you're looking at some delicate fabrics, I would test it out in an area where it can't be seen, like the hem. And all of this will prevent accidental burns and ensure smooth ironing. Tip number six, it's important that you allow time for your iron to heat up when you're using the steam setting. If not, the sole plate will leak when you activate the steam function. So give your iron the time that it needs and check your manual. Tip number seven, make sure that you pause when using your steam in between your steam bursts. When you use your steam option for a long period of time, what can happen is that your water can build up on the sole plate and this will cause some leakage. So just continue to wait a little bit longer in between your steam burst. Tip number eight, if you use the steam function on your iron, try to make sure that your ironing board cover is not worn out or in need of replacement. Sometimes steam causes condensation on the ironing board. A worn out ironing board cover will hold too much moisture and cause stains on your project. Tip number nine, once you've completed your ironing session, make sure you turn off your iron and allow time for it to completely cool down. Then go ahead and take a damp cloth and wipe the sole plate. This will avoid fibers from melting onto the sole plate and lime scale buildup. Tip number 10, when you've finished with your ironing session and you're ready to store it, just go ahead and wrap the cord around the heel of the iron. This is good for better storage 
and it also avoids you damaging or scratching the sole plate. Remember, safety first, never leave your iron unattended. So those are my 10 tips. Keeping your iron in top shape is great for optimal performance. Thanks for watching and hope to see you on the next one.